Choo Choo Charles is a recently released indie game by Two Star Gaming, a year-long solo project by Gavin Eisenbeis. I was immediately excited to get my hands on this game ever since I found his YouTube channel and saw him posting progress about the game's development. Not to say I was there since the beginning, I found this game by spotting a video titled I'm making a game about a spider train named Charles and was instantly binging everything about the game on this channel. Immediately enthralled by the concept of an open world game where you man an armed train and have to hunt down a demonic train with spider legs, it felt fairly unique as concepts go and by god do developers within the indie sphere really need that these days when making an open world game. Bought it the morning of December 9th and beat it in just over three hours yeah it's not exactly a long game but it certainly feels worth the money but i'm digressing a bit in choo choo charles you play as a monster hunter get to golf with your old pal eugene who needs your help as the island he and others were looking to mine gold on and instead have stumbled across something horrifying and they have collectively agreed to name it charles when i think thomas the demon engine gets the point across better and he asks you to come down and hunt it down and stuff it for a museum you apparently own you're looking for something big to keep your museum in business. Arriving by a robo, Eugene introduces you to the main mode of transportation and your only method of fighting Charles, a train with a machine gun mounted on the back. That gun you were looking at wasn't on here when I was evacuated from the island. Well then, it's a good thing this mining operation was hiring rednecks that carry these things around. I joke, but there's this guy, Sergeant Flint, who's an NPC that will give you a homemade flamethrower for putting out a shed fire at cause while testing, and he lives in this quote-unquote anti-Charles compound of his own making, and he even appears to have a beer gut and a bit of a southern accent. Plus, there's a lot of shotguns on this island for what is supposed to be just a gold mining operation. A lot of your weapons are homemade, really. There's a rocket launcher and a dual-barreled might be 50 cal gun that you'll always use instead of the machine gun because you can actually use the sights on this thing and it does plenty more damage before overheating. Besides getting new weaponry, you can earn scrap from people for upgrading armor attack damage and speed for quests ranging from retrieving a journal because this guy is too scared to walk back to his house to get it to entering a cave to lock pick a box to collect some woman's jar of pickles and playing a knockoff slender in the eight pages i'm not kidding he literally put a knockoff slender in the eight pages here complete with its own monster that distorts your screen gets more aggressive each page you collect except this one disappears once you get the last one all to accumulate the scrap needed to fully upgrade your ride, afford enough for repairs, and take out Charles for good. Not necessarily in that order, but after you complete the main four missions, three of which involve stealing eggs from temples controlled by Charles worshipping cultists, and rigging an old wooden bridge over a long ravine with explosives, a trap for him, that is. Now that I've got that mini review of everything else done, it's time to explain what I mean by Choo Choo Charles being the epitome or prime example of cat and mouse gameplay. A uh, cat and mouse style of game is one where the player has to move around a fairly open ended environment trying to complete tasks all the while a powerful entity roams freely and poses as an intense obstacle when the player and entity meet in the same area. Oftentimes unscripted and the player has limited or even no means of defending themselves against it. Think Mr. X and Nemesis from Resident Evil 2 and 3 remakes or even the neighbor from the Hello Neighbor games. Much like Charles, you can shoot and blow them up to your heart's content, but it only slows them down so that you can run away, continuing the game of cat and mouse as you creep about trying to avoid Shut notice, then scurrying away once spotted. Until you get all the eggs to initiate the final boss, Charles will retreat when you lower his health enough, so there's no hunting him down, only reacting when Charles is in the area. This fact that your train is fixed to the tracks and Charles is being able to move freely about prevents the tables from ever turning before the final fight. And it especially makes things intense anytime you have to leave your train to do a quest or enter a cult's controlled mine to gather the eggs, as the weapons of the train are the only means you have of defending yourself, and you cannot outrun Charles on foot, and I guess all the cult members were in their high school track teams because damn, they can run after you quickly. Plus, when you usually encounter the shotgun wielding cultist, 
it's inside a confined space where you have few options to run to. However, hiding is also difficult. There's no dedicated crouch button or even indicator as to whether or not you can be seen. Oftentimes, I would intentionally be spotted to try and take them outside to gun them down with a train. But other than that, it's a matter of creeping through like a rat and bolting to the objective when spotted. It's a heart pounding experience as you hear the whistling or humming of the cultists on their patrol paths, or the whistle of Charles's horn and wondering just how close he is to you, fleeing in terror to hide until he decides to leave so you can make a break for the train in safety of motion, and the four different damage dispensers you have on board. It's a great example of what a cat and mouse game should invoke within the player, a sense of being powerless in the face of such an immense creature and nervous to leave the only comfort zone you have in the form of an old train you own because the last driver was killed early on by Charles. Something I think the RE2 and especially 3 had a bit of trouble with because of the scripted nature of some of the encounters, causing the entity to lose a bit of fear factor as the game forces this thing onto you, as if the developers don't trust it to chase you on its own through the semi-linear design of those games. And while those games do have safe rooms, and I understand why they exist, it doesn't make a whole lot of sense for Mr. X to not follow you into a lot of these rooms. And it does make sense here why Charles would retreat when he takes too much damage. He doesn't want to die. And I also find it noteworthy that in Choo Choo Charles, your means of fight or flight is something that is tied to a track and needs to be left behind at times to progress towards your end goal. These situations add to the sense that while you may be considered a monster hunter with experience with this stuff, you are still a frail human being, limited in what you yourself can do without the backings of technology. And a bit lackluster technology is that, as all your weapons overheat pretty fast and you have to constantly run back inside to swap guns and make rapid repairs. All the while Charles is right on your rear. A point I think the beginning of the game was trying to make. When you reach the island with Eugene, he's full of confidence. But we can light up Charles with it and take him down before he even sees us coming. Like the two of you are just gearing up for some yearly big game hunt. Talking about how we're gonna roll out there and hit Charles before he even realizes it. Yet the second you head out, Charles bull rushes the two of you out of nowhere, and then the gun does pathetic damage to an enormous health bar, and Eugene gets thrown from the back of the train and speared through the belly, leaving us to find the mangled body of our friend on the tracks. <laughs> this isn't how things were supposed to end. Eugene being so quickly broken in both body and spirit, coming back expecting to be some monster slaying hero, yet he only lived long enough to speak because Charles just decided to leave instead of finishing his kill like a cat screwing with its prey. Because without all this equipment, you're simply that, a vermin scuttling away from an enormous cat, staving off your inevitable demise by fleeing into the dens Charles is too enormous to fit into. Which actually serves to make Charles's death by your hands all the more satisfying as you finally raid yourself and the island of things been causing so much fear and angst. A final look of terror on Charles's face as he plummets down the ravine trap laid earlier to face a brutal death. That I enjoyed every second of. This is why I think Choo Choo Charles is the epitome or prime example of cat and mouse gameplay, creating and maintaining this feeling of powerlessness against a seemingly unstoppable force chasing you around the island, while successfully preventing the player from ever taking it out before they've gathered the necessary materials to properly challenge Charles. I appreciate the thought and consideration that went into the development of this rather simple game. It's not exactly groundbreaking stuff, but if I had to use an example of what that style of game is and what it should hope to achieve, I shall be pointing at Choo Choo Charles for a while now.